In this video, we are going to be looking at one of the popular security myths in the cybersecurity community, and that cybersecurity myth is phishing techniques. Now, this is usually taught in security courses. This can be taught in a classroom setting. This can be taught on places like Udemy or Pluralsight. This can be taught uh, even at companies. Uh, some companies hire or spend millions of dollars, I should say, on these vendors that, that teach security. And uh, these are popular in all of these courses. You can even hear this. Uh, again, this was uh, in college. They said this a lot, quite a bit too as well. So these are, this is one of these security myths and that's how you recognize phishing. And so these are four patterns that you, that typically come up in these type of courses. Uh, one of them is there's a significant number of misspelled words or bad grammar as far as punctuation and capitalization. Um, it will contain a linked or attached document or ask you to reset personal information, usually with a link. Uh, the domain is suspicious. And then of course, um, here's some irony here. Advanced email will often flag a suspicious email where it may be a phishing attempt. So I believe Gmail is one of those that does this. <clears throat> and there's some other providers as well. The reason why I say there's uh, irony here is when Gmail flags uh, an email for being suspicious, the irony of that is it tells the hacker that they need to come up with a better email. So actually Gmail is assisting hackers because if a hacker sends the test email to themselves, they can test to see if that email is going to get flagged. And if it gets flagged, then they know they need to come up with a better phishing attempt, right? And they can keep in mind, they can set up a fake email address and then send an email to themselves. So Gmail is actually assisting hackers. Congratulations, Google, you've done a good job. Um, the reason why I say the security irony here is I would never have a tool that flags an email uh, using AI because the problem is a hacker could then use that to figure out how to write better emails, right? And that is exactly what we see in this case. So here was a phishing attempt uh, that occurred. And this was actually pretty good. Um, there's a couple of mistakes that they make in this email, but this one did not follow these rules. So the first one is um, they send what appears to be an invoice and they say, dear subscriber, we are happy to know that you choose to continue with our Windows network protection again. Okay. And that is, uh, again, this is what I would say good American English already. And I say American English because Americans are pretty bad at English themselves. So it's pretty hard to know whether you're talking to a fisher of sometimes or whether you're talking to somebody who's just a millennial who doesn't know how to speak good English. Anyway, so with amazing new features, we promise to serve your computer better with the best technicians in the world. And then of course it says important features and the charge will take da 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 da. By the way, this is just a formatting of PowerPoint. This is not how the email was formatted, but it was one, two, three, and then contact our help desk with any hesitation. Uh, if you do not recognize this invoice or do not recall renewing the Windows Network Protection Plan, then please contact our support team to stop the charge. And then you go here. And of course I've edited out the phone number, but they have a phone number, not a link, a phone number. And then thank you and John Doe. And then of course going here, uh, this is a no reply email. Replying to this email will not stop the charge. For the record, everything in this email is a standard email that you would get from an invoice. It was actually very standard. Okay, so going back to those rules of, you know, these are the how you recognize a phishing email. Um, the problem is, except that in this case, uh, there's actually fairly good American English, right? I could not tell the difference from the email and if I was dealing with somebody who was a millennial American or whether I was dealing with a phisher because at the end of the day, it was that good of English, right? Uh, there was zero links and zero attached documents. Uh-oh. Uh, uh, there was a legitimate domain. The domain that the email was sent from was a legitimate domain. Think about that, okay? Now here's some warnings. There was an identifiable person on LinkedIn. So if you go back to this, I say John Doe because I edited out the name, but if you Google the person's name, the person was a legitimate person on LinkedIn. That's scary because one of the security warnings I've been telling people about online is there's a lot of spoofing that can occur right? You can spoof somebody. This, this email did not come from this person. I happen to know that, but it was a spoofing email. They were trying to make it appear like it did come from that person, right? Um, this also appears to be a legitimate invoice. I compared it to just some other in, uh, invoices that I've received legitimately from companies and it looked like a legitimate invoice. Okay. And then of course, uh, email artificial intelligence that detecting, uh, that detects phishing failed. In this case, the email um, provider, like for instance, Gmail, that sh should detect phishing failed. And here's the irony again, going back to the point I made earlier about Gmail, is that it's actually assisting hackers because it's helping them write better and better phishing emails. Right? By sitting there and trying to protect you, the hacker's like, oh, I can't write this type of email. I'm gonna have to actually get better at doing that. And that is pre precisely what happened. So the big security warning here is that hackers adapt 
and any hard and fast rule of fishing can mutate in the future. This is why saying things like, oh, it's bad you know, punctuation or bad grammar, well, you can't really rely on that. And, and not only that, if you rely on your email tools to detect phishing, the problem is, is that uh, those tools may end up failing you, right? They may end up helping hackers write better emails. Um, this is why I, I say you hear this a lot, especially Exactus was one of the companies that said this, but AI is going to help us with security. Well, I mean, AI is also going to help hackers as well. It's not going to be one side's not going to win with, with AI. It's not going to work that way. That's uh, the gross oversimplification of artificial intelligence because it can be used by either side. All it is is a tool. Um, so Keep this in mind when it comes to hacking. I don't, I don't agree with any of these corporate courses. I don't agree with any courses in college, and I don't agree with any like courses on Udemy or uh, Pluralsight or wherever that sit there and try to say there's these hard and fast rules. There are none. Phishing is going to adapt in time, and they're going to get better and better at phishing. This email will probably really get a lot of people compromised, and the reason why is unlike the ones with links, there will be a lot of people who think this is legit. And it's because it does come off as more legit. And if you think about it, especially if you're like an older person and you're less familiar um, with some stuff like this, or even a, even young people will probably be thrown off by this to a certain degree, it doesn't come with those normal patterns that we see, right? And so if somebody has been trained on the, these normal patterns, the irony is because they're like, oh, well, there is no link or a document attached. Oh, this is good English. It must be legit. And that's actually a problem. What, what the people have done who've been training people this way is they've now trained them to think that this is legitimate. And not only that, the irony again about Gmail and it's, oh, we have AI to detect phishing, or it could be Outlook as well. Outlook also has this. The problem with these tools, these AI tools, is because this, this type of email gets through, it now makes the person think, therefore, this is safe when it's actually not safe. So this is just a security warning. This was a phishing attempt. It was an excellent phishing attempt. Kudos to the hacker who came up with it. Um, and you're going to see more and more emails like this, and it's going to make the tools that we currently have irrelevant. Uh, one of the things that I'll say about phishing, and this is my only uh, warning, is you have to expect that phishers are going to get better and better at what they do, right? And so whatever, let's say, a legitimate email that you get, a phisher is going to get to where they replicate that almost exactly. That's going to be good English. That's going to be making it seem like it's a legitimate company. That means um, making it seem like it's it's a formal, uh, let's say, invoice or formal request or whatever it is. So they're going to get better and better at imitating the real thing. So understanding the real thing is not necessarily going to help you be able to demarcate from something that's fake, right? Because it's going to look more and more like that real thing.